What's up, guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. When describing the color of a coral, perhaps the most overused term in this reef aquarium hobby is rainbow when describing anything. If it's got like a couple of colors and there's like a little variation in that second or third color, sure, let's go ahead and call it a rainbow. There could be an extra color in there somewhere. Who knows? If it looks good enough for your dog to see a rainbow, it's probably good enough for the internet as well. But this list, guys, is corals that are actually rainbows. My criteria for this little list is something that has at least four or five colors and has some really interesting patterns as well. Let's get right into it. First and foremost on this list, let's talk about Acanthophilia. Specifically the ones from Indonesia, they tend to have the most spectacular patterns and coloration. Now, there are degrees to this because a lot of the more common ones, although spectacular, are more or less red and blue and some variation of. Some of them have a little bit extra green in there, but the truly magnificent specimens that are out there They've got it all. They've got like the full five color gambit going on and they are highly, highly desirable for the folks out there that are collecting high-end LPS. Theoretically, these guys should be a lot more rare than they are because it's one of those weird things in import that Indonesia allows and it's kind of a gray area because I'm pretty sure that this coral isn't exactly green lit as far as stuff that can be exported. I'm not in the import export business, but from some of the things that I've heard, these things really should not be available. But right now is probably like the golden age of Indonesian acanthophilia. So it's hard to speculate on their future availability, but if you happen to see an absolutely spectacular specimen, now might be a great time to jump on it. Next up, we have trachophilia. Trachies, they will vary a lot in coloration depending on where they're collected. A lot of the ones I'm thinking of are Australian in origin, and they tend to be a little bit more colorful than their Indonesian counterparts. Again, it really depends on where these guys are being brought in from. My favorite have this, almost like this watercolor paint splatter aesthetic to it and they can come in a huge assortment of colors. The most common ones typically are just like all green or a couple of different shades of green and purple, but once you get into the paint splatter variety, now you're really talking about some showpiece LPS. If you are into this kind of look, there is such variation within these that you could probably pick out several dozen specimens and have each one look like a completely different rainbow. And for whatever reason, these guys are actually, I hate to say that they're value priced because they're still relatively expensive, but compared to some of the others on this list, they are fractions of the price. So in that sense, I think that they do provide a lot of value for the dollar. Okay, next up, we have Rainbow Scolies, aka Homophilia Bowerbanki. For the longest time, Scolies have been considered kind of that signature gold standard, ultra rare, ultra expensive, ultra colorful showpiece LPS coral. I think to some degree that top spot has probably been taken now by Canthophilia. That's what that was earlier on this list. But there are still some absolutely show-stopping master scolies out there. I have seen some with like six easily discernible colors. They've got really cool patterns. The master scolies tend to have that purple halo going right through their body. It's a very distinctive characteristic of a master scoli. This coral being on the list should come as no surprise to anybody. It is an iconic rainbow coral. Their coloration, very consistent overall, but oftentimes I hear folks kind of struggle with kind of keeping them long term. Usually they come in, they're perfectly healthy, and they will stay that way for a good long time. But they don't really grow very much fruit for a lot of folks. So the one recommendation that I can share for those folks that may be struggling with these guys long term is that they do like to eat. They don't like to eat a whole lot, 
but they do, over time, appreciate a little bit more food. So the kind of food that we've had the most success with was a large polyp stony pellet from Fauna Marine. And it doesn't really even take a whole lot. You just want to feed it just enough so that its tentacles come out. And if you just feed it a couple pellets per day, their body actually gets fleshier. I would say the difference between having a gel filling versus a water filling, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So when in doubt, we try to give it just a little bit of pellet food. Okay, moving on, we have the Diablo Diaceris plate corals. Plate corals are a weird one because there are a whole bunch of different genera of plates in the hobby. There's Cycloceras, there's Diaceras, Fungia, fill in the blank. There's probably a dozen of them. The thing I like about Diaceras specifically is that you can propagate these guys very easily. They cut very nicely, they heal well, and they kind of have like this scalloped looking skeleton where you can practically break it with your hands. Kind of neat. My favorite coloration of these guys is a true rainbow. And I paid out the nose retail for a fantastic specimen of these guys, mainly because I knew that they could be propagated. Kind of funny thing though, we were selling an all red variety and we called that like a red devil diaceris. And once I picked up this super amazing rainbow Diablo Diaceris. I noticed that one of my all red ones was, was starting to like put together some purple and green streaking. And I was like thinking, have I just been sitting on this Diablo variety this entire time and just not known it and sold all the other ones off as just red ones? I think that these two things might actually be the same. And over time, perhaps the all red ones will get this rainbow striations as well. Either way, no regrets whatsoever. I wanted to make sure that I got the top end DNA because again, plate coral that can be propagated that looks like this, it's a no brainer. And that's why it's on this list. The Rainbow Diablo Diceris. Next on the list, we have my favorite Favia, quote unquote Favia. It's probably a Dipsastria. It is the Meltdown Favia. And this one we picked up from my friend Nathan. He's been growing this thing out for quite a long time. I think he got his from Cherry Coral way back in the day. And I love this thing. It's got that bright, intense yellow center with a magenta rim around that. And that goes out into this green rim that has these blue highlights. And every now and again, it picks up an additional color possibly loses another color. Is this what you would call a rainbow, so to speak? I think I would, but the thing that kind of separates it out from some of the ones that you've seen previously is it doesn't have crazy like modeling or that paint splatter look. All of its colors are very, very, very well contained and I appreciate it for that. Sometimes when you go really hard into a collection of all rainbow looking things, there is this risk that all of it in its utter spectacular show of colors has this overall sameness to it. Having corals like this, where there is a distinct pattern with the color is very nice. And that was the Meltdown Favia, my favorite. What would this list be without the signature SPS? It is the Rainbow Montipora. And this one absolutely delivers on its name. If you are looking for a relatively beginner-friendly SPS with the most ridiculous coloration, for what is these days not that much money, it is the Rainbow Montipora. This thing will never let you down as far as the variation of colors, uh, how fast it grows, it encrusts onto the rock. I think this will always be a very popular coral amongst those that are into SPS. It is just magnificent. Oftentimes, it can have a lot of variation in color. And what I mean by that is it will change color dramatically based on the conditions of the tank. My favorite look is when it develops this intense sky blue base and then kind of like this explosion of like the warmer colored polyps, like the yellows, the reds, the oranges. It can also take on a very different color entirely where again, it has that blue base but most of the polyps will be green. 
and only at the edge will it have like some of the warmer colors, those reds, the oranges, and yellows. So again, a lot of this is going to depend on your specific tank, your specific parameters, the flow, all of that stuff. Once you get into SPS land, it's a situation of your mileage really may vary. It's not at all like the LPS where more or less the patterns and the color are going to be relatively consistent. I had just said that LPS coloration can be very consistent. And I'm going to give you an example of one where that's not the case. It is Australophilia wilsoni, formerly Symphilia wilsoni, formerly possibly a Lobophilia of some sort. But as of right this second, it is an Australophilia. This coral is an insane looking brain coral. And they come in so many different colors and have that really frenetic pattern. I am still collecting these guys because most of mine tend to be some combination of red and blue. And they sometimes bring in some highlights of like a sky blue or like a neon green or maybe just like the faintest hint of yellow. You know, it's like if you use your imagination hard enough or you're mostly colorblind or something, you could probably imagine there might be some yellow flecks in there. But I have seen some that are mostly yellow, that have some blues and purples and greens brought in. I'm thinking one of these days, I would love to just go on a complete wild spree hunting down all the different varieties of this coral, because in our systems, they do incredibly well, because we feed like crazy, and these guys, they eat very well. They are comically fat compared to what is typically brought in out of the wild. In the wild, they have more of that, like a, of a tight, literal brain shape. But once they're in our care and we feed them a ton, they practically look like trachees. Again, I think it's one of those things that like long-term aquaculture we, we're very comfortable with. And it's just a matter of bringing in all the different varieties of this thing. So that was Australophilia wilsoni. Very cool corals. Next up, micromusas. Back in the day, about 15, 20 years ago, these guys were the most unattainable corals coming out of Australia. And back then, they didn't look anything like this. They were much more boring. The micromusa that are available now, and actually back then they were Acanthastria, but now they're, they're micromusas. What is being collected now are so spectacular. There are so many different varieties of these rainbows. My only thing about them is I wish that we did better with them. They seem to do really well in a couple of our tanks and then really poorly in a couple others because they're not particularly difficult. There's just something occasionally that bothers them. And this is kind of a thing about long-term aquaculture. Sometimes you develop these systems that is good for like 90% of your corals. And unfortunately, the 10% that are mad are going to be something like this some insanely beautiful micromusa. So anyway, that was just like a, a personal anecdote of what's going on here. But this is another one of those corals that I would like to just collect every single variety of as if it was just a Pokemon collection because there's so many different varieties, so many cool colors and patterns. And that is kind of similar to when we were talking about the Meltdown Favia. There are kind of like these known patterns and when you can kind of anticipate what these things will look like, where it's not just a completely random splattering, where there are some concise ring shapes, there's some concise striping. When you put those together in a single display, they, they stand out from one another, yet each one is a different rainbow. Very cool coral to collect. Again, for us, room for improvement. I am definitely looking to fix whatever's going on in our systems, because this is really one of the coolest LPS. This list would be woefully incomplete without chalices. There are a number of chalices that folks could very easily call a rainbow, and nobody's going to give them any blowback on that. Some of them, though, are just a cut above. And for me, there is no more distinctive rainbow variant than the dynamite chalice. 
this is easily like my favorite chalice and it's not even close. There isn't really even a second place on the list. That is how much of a lead this particular color variant has over all the others. It looks like you took a bunch of crayons, melted them down, and gave it multicolored eyes. Mostly green eyes, which is kind of neat because it kind of stands out from the base. But when you take a closer look at some of those eyes, they absolutely have another whole thing going on. Some of them, while they are mostly green, essentially look like a really cool scully type pattern. And again, I think that this kind of goes to how clean the colors separate. You see huge sections of the coral be one solid blotch of magenta bordered by a hard break and you're into like the teals and the greens and the reds. It's all nicely separated. There's no blotchiness to it. It's, it's literally like that was a melted crayon right next to another melted crayon. It's a very cool aesthetic. So for all you chalice collectors out there, this stands at the top of the mountain. Next up, this is our tie-dye Acan Echinata. Acan Echinatas, one of the few Acans that are still left in this hobby, it seems, they don't have a ton of color variation, usually. Usually you kind of have this mint green color and some orange and maybe some purple. And that's it. A lot of purples, lots of that greenish teal color, right? And then you have the tie-dye. And that is a true rainbow variant of this. It's easily one of the most in-demand corals that we sell. There's a huge long wait list for this. The only thing I wish for these guys is that they grew just a little bit faster. Because what tends to happen for us is that because of how the colors separate on this guy, oftentimes we'll get like a colony that is all purple and green. And then another colony that turns out to be like almost all orange and green. And it takes a really long time for those guys to then develop those second, third, fourth, fifth colors. So when you see a really big piece that has all the different variation, it's an absolutely show-stopping piece. In frag form, it's really difficult to like get absolutely everything put together. But who knows? Every now and again, you get this really, really cool variant, which is almost like a two-faced look where one polyp is mostly purple, one polyp is mostly orange, and then the inside looks like a bleeding apple scoli, which is green with red and purple streaks. You never really know what to expect with these tie-dye acan echinatas. Next up, there are not a lot of discosoma that I would consider rainbows. There's a lot of really cool ones like jawbreakers and eclectic. I, I love all those different varieties of like high-end discosoma, but none of them are really rainbow. They're usually one or two colors with a cool pattern. We got this one in though that kind of had that interstellar look where it's kind of very speckled. When we looked more closely, it was almost like every single speckle was a different color. And so we just called this one the goat. If you guys follow anything sports related, you know what the goat means. This was by far our most spectacular mushroom. And we are still growing this out very slowly because this is one of those things where for us, they're very difficult to cut. And on top of that, they are very prone to taking a hike and letting go of the rock. So right now, I think we only have like a couple specimens and we're hoping to grow a lot more in the future. It's always been slow for us. It's, I believe that these are Australian, but this is by far the nicest specimen of this kind that we've ever gotten. Hopefully in the future we'll have a ton available, but it has been a very slow process to say the least. But that's the goat. Next up, this is an oldie but goodie. Back in the day, there were these carpet anemones available from Vietnam. And the very first shipments of them were awesome. And ever since, they've been kind of a more disappointing purple and green. But we still have some from the very, very, very original batch that we got way back. And I'm talking like what seems to be 12 to 15 years ago. Unfortunately, we either sold or lost a couple of my absolute favorites, one of which was like a bright red one, but we still do have a couple of our rainbow ones. When it comes to these carpets, they can get to be about six inches. They eat like crazy. Sometimes people do have 
a little bit of an issue with them being a little bit too aggressive when it comes to fish and stuff. I personally have never had an issue, but somebody will always chime in with some story about how it ate their angelfish or something like that. So whenever you're talking about carpet anemones, there's always a bit of a it ate my fish risk, especially once they get larger. The cool thing though, is that while they don't really host things like clownfish, at least not naturally, they do host other weird stuff like porcelain crabs, they host sexy shrimp, things like that. You can find some pretty cool secondary interactions, as well as one of the, the coolest rainbow patterns in the anemone world. Last on this list, we have the Rhodactus. Now, there are a bunch of Rhodactus that could have made this list. There's a lot of really cool multicolored ones, but I think as far as the one that's the most desirable, the one that is easily the best known, we're talking about the OG bounce mushroom, made very famous back in the day by Worldwide Corals. I have told this story before, but I'll just tell it again. One of my friends bought this. This was like right when this thing came out and he got something the size of like a toenail clipping. All I saw was just like a bunch of bubbles and I thought it looked absolutely dumb and he paid a whole bunch of money for it and i thought that was extra dumb and the joke's on me because i think ever since he's probably propagated that thing a hundred times it probably paid for a home edition and here it is making my list of one of the best rainbow colored corals out there the bounce bubbles themselves have a little bit of color variation to them most of the time they're going to be yellow but they are able to take on some additional striations and then the body itself has a whole bunch of different little colors popping off. So the representative on this list from the Rhodactus world is the OG Bounce. All right, guys, that is my list of my favorite corals in the hobby. Leave a comment below with your favorite. And if I left anything off, feel free to chime in as well on that. Okay, until next time, happy reefing.